Hello, this is a walkthrough of multiple regression in R. We're going to look at the body fat data set. This is a data set about the body fat of 252 individuals. And it asks whether uh, easily measured things about those individuals, like their weight and various um, size measurements, can predict body fat. Because body fat is quite difficult to measure and these other things are easier to measure. So that's the question and that's the data set. Uh, let's switch to R and get started. So the first thing to do is open up a new script and do the preliminaries, the usual preliminaries that we do. Clear R's brain, RM list equals LS, and load some libraries. I'm going to load the tidyverse package, which loads a bunch of others like ggplot and dplyr. I'm also going to use one called, oh no, I'm, not, I'm going to use one called ggfortify. That's to get the diagnostic plots easily. Super, so there the preliminaries done. Now I'm going to import the data set from CSV, that is from a text file that's on my computer. Browse to that. It's on my desktop. I put it there before. There it is, bodyfat.txt. No, we can't see this data preview so well. Let's just zoom out in our studio a bit so it's clearer. I'll just cancel that and do the import again. Browse, desktop, body fat, open. Okay, good. We can see a bit, this, this preview um, window is bigger. And we can see that it's not... Um, going to import as we would like it to. It's not recognizing that there's lots of different columns here. Um, that's because in this box here, it's looking for a comma delimiter, a comma separating the values in different columns. And actually this file, we could just go through and check, see, see which it is. It's not, it's not actually a semicolon. Let's check tab. Oh, that works. It's tab delimited then, so that works. And I'm going to tell it to call the data when it comes in, call it DD. You can see here it's changed to DD. So now we can grab this code here, just the DD read DLIM part of it, copy that, I can even press cancel here, and then paste it here. So if I run all of this code with Control A, then Command Enter, loads various libraries, here is the result of the read DLIM, the import. It says passed with column specifications and it tells me um, the column names. So the first column was NR, the second was density, then body fat, then age, then weight, and what they've come in as. So an integer, a double, which is a continuous variable, continuous variable, an integer, and so on. Looking up here, we can see that there's 252 observations and 19 variables. Perfect, so it looks like um, the data has come in as we want it to come in. Now, when we looked at this data set in a previous exercise, we identified weight, the weight variable, and the abdomen variable as potentially good predictors of body fat. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this um, um, a bit simpler, make things a bit simpler for ourselves by making a data set uh, version of this data set that contains only the three variables that we're interested in, the body fat variable, the weight variable, and the abdomen variable. So which function in dplyr, quick question for you, which function in dplyr do we use to get only a few of the columns? Here we go, just do this. Well, the function is select. We give it the data and then the names of the columns we want weight and abdomen. Can run that. No news is good news, so that we don't get anything back from R. We see now this DD data set uh, still contains 252 observations, but only three variables. Let's have a quick look at it by clicking here. Perfect, that's what we wanted. That will make things a little bit easier now. Now the next thing we should do when we're looking at data um, or in our workflow is look at the data. The first thing we can look at is the distribution of the variables. So to make a 
frequency distribution of a variable, we use, as always, ggplot, the data, and then what's the geome for a frequency distribution? Well, it's histogram. And then we give it the mapping. Oops. Mapping equals AES, the aesthetic mapping, and the X. We do body fat. Let's have a look at the distribution of the body fat variable. We get this warning, uh, stat bin using bins equals 30. So there's 30 bins by default. Uh, it looks reasonably normal, but there's a few um, potential outliers up, up here. Let's leave it with that for the moment. Look at the other variables. I'm just going to copy that three times and then look at weight. And for this one, we'll look at abdomen. Run that line. Here's the weight. Um, now, for, for linear regression, the explanatory variables, weight is the ex one of the explanatory variables. Uh, doesn't have to be normally distributed. Um, it's reasonably so, but we do have this rather extreme value out here. We'll leave that in for now. Um, we might want to consider checking how robust the results that we find are to this point being included or excluded. Perhaps we'll do that uh, at the end of the exercise. So um, the next abdomen, distribution of abdomen. Again, relatively normally distributed. And we've got this extreme value again. So looking at those distributions, we suspect that um, the assumption of normality of linear regression is going to be reasonably well met. Oh, actually, let's put in another library, the library that gives us the nice pairs plots. GG Alley. And then we can do GG pairs of DD. Oops, I didn't run this. I typed it, but I didn't run it. Now run it. And here we go. Well, we get the distributions here. We needn't have done all, all of these histograms. We get the distributions here as a kind of fitted line um, through the distribution. There we go. Here are the relationships between body fat and weight. They're all positive relationships and quite strong. So we might suspect, actually, that um, in the linear regression, we'd get a positive um, slopes. And also, we should um, find that there's quite a lot of um, power for that model. It explains quite a lot of the variation in body fat. So weight and abdomen as the explanatory variables, the two continuous explanatory variables, they should explain quite a lot of variation in body fat. So we'd be expecting to see an R squared that is quite high. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs>